Hi everyone! Welcome or welcome back to our Swiss adventure. I feel like it's been a while since I've filmed a video like that where I just sit down and talk about a topic. That's because we only just recently came back from our road trip around Switzerland. It was great. We were driving around for a whole week. We took lots of beautiful photos. We had lots of amazing experiences and I've posted lots of stuff already on our Instagram page, which is just our Swiss adventure. So make sure you check it out if you are looking for some inspiration for places to visit in Switzerland. This video is going to be for everyone who has just moved to Switzerland or who is planning to move to Switzerland and has learned that you have to have a health insurance here and you don't know really much about it. Having just gone through the experience of picking a health insurance here, I have learned a lot and I feel like through our experiences we have acquired some knowledge which will be useful to share to everyone so that you don't ponder for hours and hours over which one to pick and how it all works. Hopefully in this video I'll be able to explain you all the basics that you'll need to choose your health insurance. As usual, a few disclaimers. Everything I'll be talking about will be based purely on our experience, on our perspective as two young, fairly healthy people. So if you have some chronic illnesses or if you're on a person of older generation, you'll probably have a slightly different outlook to the whole subject. I will link any useful resources that we have found down below so make sure you check them out if you still have some questions or if you have very specific questions that I haven't covered in this video. As I have mentioned everyone who arrives to Switzerland and is planning to stay here to live here to reside here you will have to get a health insurance and you will have to do it within the first three months after you have registered for your permit. This is an important piece of information because it seems like no one actually tells you about it um, as you arrive and for example I was under the impression that you only get your health insurance once you have actually received your permit but actually that's not the case you have to start the application process as soon as you have received your confirmation of application for the residency permit. If you have visited the websites of some of the Swiss health insurance companies already you'll see that there are lots of different ones but actually the ones that you have to have as a resident here are the basic insurance and the accident insurance and normally if you buy both of them yourself then the accident insurance is just as an add-on onto your basic insurance. Something that's important to mention is that if you are employed for more than eight hours a week you will already have your accident insurance covered through your workplace so you will only need to buy the basic insurance yourself. Swiss health insurance law that's called LAMAU describes what every basic and every accident insurance in Switzerland has to include and that basically means that whichever insurer you're going to go to they will provide you the same amount of coverage for the basic and for the accident insurance so you don't have to worry about that but there are some differences between the different insurers and the differences will be in how you get to your desired doctor and also whether you're going to be limited to a certain list of doctors that um, this insurance company cooperate with. As I have just mentioned, there are differences in Swiss health insurances and these differences are often caused by a insurance plan type. Each type will determine who will be your first point of contact in case you need some medical care. The first type of insurance is standard and this is a type that has existed already for a long time and it's also traditionally the most expensive one. In this case, from what I understand, you can literally just go to any doctor you want straight away without having to consult with anyone. There are also three other types that are slightly different from standard and all these types result in lower insurance costs for you and also lower costs to your insurer. The first type is called HMO, which is a medical center, which means that if you have any issues, you first have to go to one of the designated medical centers and consult with one of the specialists there. Another type is family doctor, which means that if you have any issues, you go to your family doctor and then potentially he refers you to some other specialist. The last type is called Telmed or a pharmacy plan which basically means that first, if you have any issues, you have to either call a helpline or go to a partner pharmacy and speak to someone that will then tell you, okay, you need to go see a family doctor or if you need to go straight to a specialist, they will basically guide you in your next steps and you have to have an authorization from them to proceed with your appointments. 
From all these types, the standard, the HMO, the family, doctor and the Telmed, the pharmacy plan, I don't think there's much difference personally between them. So I think it's just your personal preference. If you, for example, prefer to always go to your family doctor first, then you can choose a family plan. Or if you don't mind actually using the helpline, some of the helpline uh, plans are actually cheaper than all the other plans. Some insurance companies will limit you to a list of doctors that you're allowed to see. Uh, based on who they cooperate with and normally if you go on a website of a specific insurance company you can just find that list. You can also find a list of the therapists that they partner with and you can check if a specific doctor you for example wanted to see that you have been recommended will be included on that list but most of the time those lists are quite vast so I wouldn't worry about it too much. The next thing I want to talk about is the cost for health insurance because I think this is something most people are worried about when they move to Switzerland. Oh my god, how much is it going to cost? And we can divide the total expenses for your healthcare into three separate sections. And the first section is your monthly contribution or your monthly premium. And that's something you will have to pay every month. It will be the same amount of money every month in this given year. You will have to pay it no matter how much treatment you get or you don't get. If you don't get any treatment, it's just a set cost. Next thing you will have to pay if you're starting to get some treatments is your franchise or it's also called an excess. And if you don't understand what any of this means, I'll just explain. A franchise is basically a total amount of money you will have to pay for your treatments that will not be covered by your insurance. So for example, if you have a franchise set at 300 francs, that means for the first 300 francs worth of your treatments, you have to pay for them yourself. And after you have exceeded this amount per year, your insurance company will start to contribute the money towards your medical care. And the third chunk of expenses that might be involved in your medical care is the co-payment or basically what happens after you have exceeded your franchise because you would have thought that okay you've exceeded your franchise and now your insurance pays for everything no 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 we're in switzerland so that's not how it works basically after exceeding your franchise you still have to pay for 10 percent of your treatments and you will have to do that until you have now paid another 700 francs on top of your franchise and for a child this number is lower, it's 350 francs I think. So essentially the three things are the monthly premium that you pay every month, then the franchise that you might need to pay if you start taking out some treatments and you have to reach that amount before your insurance company starts to pay for your treatments. And after that you pay 10% on any treatments you receive until you have reached 700 francs. And it's important to understand the system because if you're a person that is young, that is healthy, that doesn't really go to doctors, that means that if you think about how much you're going to spend on health insurance, it's probably going to be just your monthly premiums and that's it, or maybe a bit over that. And for example, if you have chronic illnesses or if you need lots of doctor's appointments a year, that means that you will not only pay your monthly premiums, you'll probably also spend all of your franchise and maybe also start paying into your co-payments. So it's something really important to consider, you know, how good is your health, how much treatment you might get, and that will influence what sort of insurance you might want to pick. In terms of picking your health insurance, I would really, really recommend a website called comparis.ch. There they actually even explain different categories of health insurances and different elements of the health insurance. Now I'll quickly show you how to use Comparis and what factors could influence your health insurance cost. So we'll go to Comparis.ch and we pick insurance, health insurance, where we get taken to a page where you get to pick which insurance you'd like to compare. So for us the main interest is basic health insurance, which is the one that everyone has to have. And let's say your postcode is 1000, which is Lausanne, you say compare and save. And you get taken to a different page where you have to fill out more data about yourself. You say that currently you're not insured by anyone, so you say you're relocating to Switzerland. And you have to say what your year of birth is. So for example, it's 1980, let's say. And you pick your franchise, your deductible or your excess, whatever anyone calls it, it's all the same stuff. Let's say you pick the highest excess and you pick to have accident insurance cover as well. And you can see already from here that the cheapest premium for you that will be available is 317 francs per month. 
So now let's say if you actually want to insure your child. Let's say your child was born in 2009 and you will like the child to have the highest deductible, the highest franchise, which is 600 for children. You see that previously we had about 300 francs, I think, per month for an adult, whereas for a child of the age of 11, you would have a monthly premium of only 71 francs, which basically shows that for children, the insurance contributions are actually much lower than for the adults. Let's say we go back to you, the adult, born in 1980, and let's say you want to understand, okay, what happens if I change my deductible? As you can see here, it's written that if you are planning to take below 2,000 francs per year in healthcare costs, it's better to have 2,500 francs, which is the highest deductible. And if we actually pick this, we can see that the cheapest premium you will have is 317. But if you go for the lowest deductible, so the lowest franchise, we can see that actually your premium goes up by quite a lot. So it becomes 445 francs a month, which basically shows that it's really only if you are definitely sure that you're going to use a lot of healthcare, it's worth taking out this insurance plan with the lower deductible because otherwise you'd just be paying a lot every month. If we go back to our highest deductible, and let's say you don't live in Lausanne, you are living, or planning to live in Lausanne. Let's pick a postcode. So let's say it's Lausanne, which is 6,000. And voila, it has become 229 per month instead of the 319. So that just shows that wherever you are planning to live, make sure that you check your monthly premiums that are available to you because everything will very much vary depending on your location. And even for my insurance, I checked that depending on where I would be insured in the country, it would be anywhere between 200 and 300 francs per month for the basic insurance so it really varies a lot especially if you consider that you would have to pay 12 months of this the costs really really add up but let's say if you're planning to live in Lucerne and we scroll down we can see that also another thing that you can select is the insurance model and that's what I already talked about so the standard family doctor HMO or Telmed and for example, if you think that you want to have the standard model and you want to be able to pick whoever you want, just go straight to the doctor you want to go to. You will just untick these things and you see straight away in your results that the premium has gone up, which basically shows that the standard models tend to be more expensive per month. And for example, if you pick a Telmed model or HMO family doctor, which are the cheaper ones, we're back to our 229 per month. So once you've picked all of this, you go to your results and you will see all the insurance options available to you and all the companies that operate in this area. And for each of them, you can see that you can expand and see more details about it. You can also go to the website of this company to read about it more, which I really recommend. You can also see the rating of each of these companies. And I would say the rating is actually Somewhat important because some companies will have really bad customer service and considering how much you will be paying every month, I would say, make sure you pick wisely. I've talked about basic health insurance and accident health insurance, which you have to have in Switzerland, but also there are other types of insurances that these companies provide. And there are lots of different add-ons that you can have on top of your basic insurance. I would really recommend checking out the individual insurance websites for the different complementary insurances they have because some of them are quite handy to have. If, for example, you want to have a gym membership and then it turns out that if you get this complementary insurance from, uh, I don't know, Suica, for example, they will pay part of your gym membership costs. Or, for example, you want to use therapies that are considered to be alternative, like, I don't know, like some sort of massage or like acupuncture or something like that. Those complimentary plans will cover you in that case. I have mentioned at the very start of the video that once you arrive and once you register, you basically have three months to get your health insurance. And as I said as well, I didn't know about this. I was just waiting to get my permit and 
If you have seen my video about my permit, you know that it took absolutely forever, which means that basically I only got it about seven months after arriving here. That means that when I registered for my insurance, which was in August, that was considered to be late insurance registration. And I got lots of very lovely letters saying you're late, you've broken the law, da 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 da. So, in case you're one of those people like me, I'll just explain you what happens if you are late. Essentially, once you register, they will tell you how much you have to pay for the months that you have missed. And by the law, you have to pay between 30 and 50% of the basic insurance for all the months that you have missed. And the payment will last for double the amount of months you have missed. Say for example, you missed four months of your payments. Overall, you will pay for 60 to 100% of those months. And this amount will depend on specific insurance company because each insurance company is free to set this percentage. And what happens is that the insurance company itself calculates this amount and then just add it on to your monthly insurance cost. So for example, if your insurance starts in August, that means that for this month you won't just pay for the August, you also pay the small contribution, or well not small, a contribution <laughs> for whatever you have missed before. So it's not like you're gonna have to pay everything straight away for all the months you have missed. So hopefully now you understand better how the insurance plans work and what types there are. And in case you're now wondering, you know, if I feel unwell, for example, and I want to see a doctor, how do I get to this doctor? I'll just quickly explain you how it all happens. Everything obviously depends on your plan and who is your first point of contact. So for example, for my insurance plan, first point of contact is a phone line, which means that first I have to call them and explain what the problem is and if they think it's serious enough, they'll tell you, okay, you need to see, for example, a family doctor. And then you make an appointment with a family doctor and you can find them online, you can get a recommendation. You register for your appointment and once you arrive at your doctor, you obviously have your appointment and you show your insurance card. Each person that is insured in Switzerland will have this insurance card that is with a little chip which basically will contain all of your information so it's not like you need to come and present your documents or something like that you just give them your card and they'll know exactly who you are after your appointment you might get a referral to a different specialist or you might get a prescription for some drugs and essentially anything you get in your prescription will be covered by your health insurance after your appointment you will receive a letter that will tell you exactly how much did your appointment cost and how much you have to pay for it. There are basically two options of what you might see in this letter. The first option is that you will just see an amount that you are actually liable for. It will account for any of the franchise, any of the co-payments, any of that sort of stuff. You'll just basically pay what you have to pay and that's it and you're sorted. And then the second option is that your insurance company will just tell you to pay everything that was um, the cost of this treatment, of this appointment. And afterwards, if you think you have already exceeded your franchise, you will have to make an application to this insurance company to then claim back your money. If after all of this information, you're still like, Erica, what the heck? This insurance palaver is just too confusing, too complicated. Please, please, please make sure you check the links that are in the description box of this video. It will provide you more information on insurance types and the insurances and everything like that. Also, I would really recommend to pick a company that you think you like to be insured with and you can always contact them by phone, by email, through their website and ask them for clarification on anything that you don't understand. And some of them will even offer you an appointment to explain how everything works and to explain the insurance plan to you. So make sure you use that opportunity because you don't want to pick an insurance and then not actually fully understand what you picked. And considering how much you're gonna have to pay for it, I would say definitely get most out of the customer service team and clarify all your questions in advance. With all that said, I wish you'd stay really, really healthy so you don't need to use Swiss Healthcare. And even if you do use it, I wish you'd have really good experience with it. And as always, if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, if you have any experiences that you'd like to share, 
please make sure you comment down below. As usual, make sure you subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this or if you want to see our adventures around Switzerland, our travel videos. And I hope to see you really soon in the next video. Bye!